How you doing, fam, ma'am? This is Chris Mizo here. I'm excited to share with you a competition between both Zen 4 processors. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the 7950X versus the 7950X3D. I do want to talk about these processors first, especially if you're trying to decide and decipher between the both of them, because this can easily be a very confusing topic because you're probably not sure which processor is best for you. First, we're gonna go over the specifications of AMD's Ryzen 9 7950X. It has a standard block of up to 4.5 gigahertz, has a turbo boost up to 5.7 gigahertz, has 16 cores and up to 32 threads, has a TDP up to 170 watts, and it also features up to 230 watts when it comes to power delivery. Another really great feature has an L1 cache of one megabyte, L2 cache of 16 megabytes, L3 cache of 64 megabytes, which really isn't bad. The CCD features up to two CCXs and up to an improvement of up to 13% in IPC of instructions per clock. The Ryzen 9 7950X3D, which just recently got released just a week ago, their specifications feature up to a standard clock of 4.2 gigahertz and a turbo clock up to 5.7 gigahertz, which is similar to its standard 7950X. It also features 16 cores and 32 threads, which is really similar. It does use less power up to 120 watts, which is great. Even though it has a TDP of 120 watts, it has a L1 cache of one megabyte, L2 cache of 16 megabytes, L3 cache of up to 128 megabytes, which is double of the standard 7950X. Now, the similarities between the two, they feature up to 28 lanes for PCI Express 5.0, which is excellent if you're looking to enter the new generation when it comes to PCI Express. Even though it is into AM5's newest motherboards, whether you get a B650 or a X670E, either motherboards are great when it comes to performance. Now, it does have DDR5, with featuring the new Expo profile. They both have PBO, which is set for easy overclocking. But beware, if you do choose to go the PBO route, it may void your warranty. I know, it's, a, it's really odd, even though it is a factory overclock, but whatever. Without further ado, I know you want to see the benchmarks when it comes to work and play. Before we do, I do want to explain one thing. I do have a RTX 4090. And why do I bring it up? The reason why I do bring it up is because it will give readings of higher heat dissipation with the X3D chipset. I know Nvidia's effing around like usual. They decided to come out with a hotfix for it. And because that they did, I can give an updated benchmark after this video is created. I will make sure to link it to this video to see the more updated temperatures if that is what you are interested in. Let's go straight to the test so you can see for yourself.
All right, so now you saw both of the benchmarks. Now you have an idea of what these processors really feature. 7950X is really impressive, especially for their newest chipset. A really great thing about it, you will not have to worry about bottlenecking, especially if you have a RTX 4090. That is a common issue, especially when you're coming from Zen 3, where your GPU is only gonna be working about 60 to 65%. The 7950X is an excellent choice. It has excellent frame rates. There is no issues when it comes to gaming. It performs really well. And if you are you don't play games as much, the great thing about the 7950X, it even performs better when it comes to work task, as you saw. The Cinebench scores are higher, Monster is higher. Anything that has to do with work-related tasks, the 7950X excels. It does great in gaming, but not as well as the 7950X3D. For the 7950X, the temperatures are naturally higher because the wattage is much higher on the processor, which requires and generates much more heat. It doesn't have the extra V-cache where it ends up penalizing when it comes to work-related tasks. So it is a great option for you guys out there if you're streamers, content creators, if you're a graphic designer, or if you're using it for work-related tasks, 7950X is a great option and it is also cheaper, which you can purchase it on Amazon for under 600 USD or on Newegg for under 600 USD. Now, when it comes to more for the game side of things, if you want better frame rates, you can see that it improves up to about 50 frames per second when it comes to gaming. It is also a lot more stable. It has a lot less issues, but of course you realize that the temperatures are a little bit high for what wattage it is. I assure you, the hot fix, the temperatures are a little bit more chilled than that. If you are here for more of the gaming side and you do some work, you don't work as much as you game, the 7950X3D is a great option. The reason why is because the extra V cache, which is the L3 cache, will help support you and give you better frame rates but the only problem with this processor i do have to say is because it only has the extra v cache on one ccx compared to the both of them but it's not necessarily a bad thing the other ccx was designed for to help you with work related tasks both processors are excellent products of AMD. One has a higher price tag, which is the 7950X3D, which just because it just recently got released and it's 699 USD to purchase that processor. Practically, if you work more, the 7950X will fit your needs and it does require a AIO when you do, or some sort of liquid cooling when it comes to either processor, because it is much better designed for that. The 7950X3D might get away with using more of a CPU fan if you choose to, like a Noctua, but I would recommend a AIO also for that processor. I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is deciding between both of these processors, make sure you share this video with them. And also, if not part of the Big Wendell fan band, make sure to go down and hit the subscribe button for more, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. For all the news updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fam and guys, which Zen 4 processor do you prefer? Or are you just going to wait for the 7800X3D? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.